It's 2015, January 1st, and one thing that's on my mind right now is, where are the flying cars? Where's the DeLorean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I mean, because I'm starting to... I'm looking for like a pizza hydrator or a hoverboard uh, around here, and there's nothing. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, yeah. you gotta figure. You gotta figure. The years just started, so those <laughs> those started, those, those, like, those things may those things may come in due time. That's right. Yeah. But folks, that's not what this video is about. I am uh, I am Steve K here with you all once again with another video, and this is going to be our NFL picks and predictions for the wild card. Because yes, this uh, Saturday is. The beginning of the wild cards, we're now no longer in the regular season, we're now in the playoffs. Yeah, playoffs. Playoffs? Playoffs. <laughs> As you can tell, yes, I am joined by two guests. I have, for the first time, well, not really joined me for videos several times, Marty, Matt, one, two, three. Happy New Year, everybody. Yep. And Tim McClellan. Happy New Year, everyone. Yep. <clears throat> Alright. So now... Let's get underway, shall we? Yep. Now, let's start with, um, well, we have uh, four games. Two that will be on Saturday, and the other is on Sunday. So, let's just start with our Saturday game. Let's start with the NFC first. The Arizona Cardinals and the Carolina Panthers in Carolina. Now, the Carolina, not, not, not the Panthers, excuse me, though. Arizona Cardinals, I want to say, kind of surprised me a little bit. They put up a good season. They finished 11-5 and with new quarterback Carson Palmer, who wound up getting hurt as well later in the season. Then a couple others filled in as well, but they still put up a pretty good season. The Panthers, however, clinch with a 7-8 and record and one tie against the Bengals. I've never seen somebody with a record under 500 with more <coughs> losses than wins and still clinch. I've never really seen that happen. I really have not. Yeah, no. but surprisingly they are in, and they face the Cardinals, and um, I don't really know about this matchup. I mean, for me, I think it can go either way. I mean, both teams are good. Uh, Cam Newton's a great player, and he came back from that injury from that car accident that he suffered, and I'm really glad that he did make a recovery because I'm a big fan of the guy as well. And, again, the game is in Carolina, but... As a way I'm looking at this, I'm going to look at this a little bit, and um, I'm going to uh, take a shot, and I'm going to go with the Panthers in this one, because, you know, like I said, I, I like them, and I like Cam Newton, and however, it could be a little bit of a close game, but you never know, because this is the wild card and stuff, you know, things, many things happened before. But I'm gonna go with the Panthers in this with a final score of twenty-seven to twenty. Ooh. Hmm. Hmm, interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, um <clears throat> yeah, to say that the Carolina Panthers got into the playoffs with a record of seven, eight, and one. Yep. Uh I mean that that whole division, the NFC South was just atrocious. <laughs> I mean, got that right. Man. Yeah, the Panthers just basically the pack. The Panthers actually backed their way into the playoffs after taking down Atlanta. Atlanta was a disappointment this year. I thought they would improve. Yeah. Uh, yep. Tampa Bay was totally bad all season long. No yeah. surprise. Uh -huh. <laughs> Sorry, and and. <laughs> and Probably one of the most surprising teams this year for all the wrong reasons, the New Orleans Saints. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, the Saints are used to the powerhouse of that division, but uh, I don't know. But I don't think there's any reason for the Saints to uh, fire Sean Payton. He's still a great coach, a great, uh -huh. great, great coaching mind. So yeah. I'd say, yeah. But as far as this game is concerned, uh, yeah, the Cardinals have been a have been a real surprise this year. Uh, like I said, I've not seen Carson Palmer play this good since he was in the, at Cincinnati, yep. and he goes down, and they have this other quarterback that comes in, and he goes down too. Yep. So they're going to start Ryan Lindley 
Yeah. I don't know much about this guy. I don't either. <laughs> I don't know. But um, according to, I'm, I'm on the uh, NFL.com playoff pick em. And according to the voting consensus, oh, wow, this game is almost a pick em. Right now, it's, the consensus is 51% for Arizona, 49% for Carolina. Hmm. Wow. But, you know, they're saying to pick them, go with the home team. So, I guess I'm, so I guess I'm going to be taking the Panthers. They'll squeak one out. I say final score, it'll be 24-21, Carolina advances. Hmm. Seven, eight, and one. That is just sad. <laughs> Let me see. Seven, eight, and one. It's not often for a losing team to make it to the playoffs. With a rejuvenating John St Jonathan Stewart with 486 yards in the past five weeks, winning the charge. Carolina finished the season seventh in total rushing somehow. And then there's a guy named Cam Newton. Following yep. a 12 and 4 season last year, former Heisman Trophy be winner regrets this fall. Oops. Sentiment of numbers that certainly support, but same can't be said for Arizona's quarterback. Upon losing Carson Palmer for the season in Week 10, the Cardinals have managed a ho hum 3-4 record. Worst backup Drew Stanton who was filled in acquaintantly for Palmer, was knocked out of the team's final two weeks with a knee injury. Starting running back Andre Ellington was also lost for the season. The Cards was astounding receiving trio and when it Gerald, Michael Floyd, and John Brown. So I believe this is going to be a very close game with Cam Newton, uh, Larry Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald, Michael Floyd, and John Brown. But I think Arizona has a chance to come out on top 24-20. Okay. Ah, going with the road team. Yeah. Interesting. So we got two for Carolina and one for Arizona. Yep. Now, if only we had like a couple more like they do in the NFL countdown, like Chris Berman and Mike Ditka and many others and get their picks like that. But <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, moving <clears throat> on. Uh... Well, I think uh, we know which one we're going to do now, because since we're on the uh, NFC. AFC, yeah, well, yep, uh, let's move on to the NFC, the um, next one that is the Detroit Lions and Dallas Cowboys. <clears throat> okay, um, yeah, it's in uh, Dallas, of course, and, well, um, well, both of these teams were good, okay? Now, the Dallas Cowboys, in my opinion, they played a little bit better than the Lions did. I mean, Tony Romo surprised me. He really did. DeMarco Murray, the running back, did a great job as well. A lot of them did. I mean, I expect them to probably do at least maybe 10-6, and six, maybe, I thought. But they finished 12-4, and four, which is great. And they clinched the AFC North. Uh, not AFC North, what, what the heck? <laughs> the NFC. I know, East. I'm, I'm sorry. East. I'm sorry. Oh. Yeah, um, mine was on the AFC. Uh, anyway, um, so when they when they wound up clinching as well, and then the Eagles wound up getting knocked out as well from the Redskins, I believe it was, which I thought the Eagles were going to stay in the hunt, but they really did not. So um, the Lions, uh, Lions, uh, Cowboys clinched, and. The Lions, you know, that damn guy on there they have on there, he keeps stomping on all these players. I mean, if anybody saw him stomping on that player, Aaron Rodgers, I mean, I really think this guy needs to be learned, needs to be taught a lesson. I mean, I can't stand that guy for one, whatever his name is, but, I mean, but with that being said, I'm going with the Cowboys in this one because I pretty much prefer them over the Lions, but even though... They're a good team, too, you know, with Stafford, Megatron, Reggie Bush. But still, for the Cowboys, you have Romo, Murray, and Bryant. And I think it'd be pretty close, too, but I say Cowboys once again. Let's go with a score of 30 to 24. By 
the way, that gentleman's name is Indomitian Sue. Yes, uh, I couldn't even, I know it was Sue, but I couldn't figure out the first name. I'm going to let something out right now. All right, go ahead. The simple fact that Indomitian Sue is going to be playing in this game is a total atrocity after what just happened last week against Green Bay. I mean, I'm sure everybody saw what happened. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the first step on Aaron Rodgers' leg was an accident, but I guess since it was Aaron Rodgers, he decided to say a second step. I saw that. Mm -hmm. Now, what? Oh, we just lost Marty. Hopefully, we'll get him back. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> thing is, I think it was on Monday, the NFL originally was going to suspend him for one game. He filed an appeal the next day, and he got the suspension lifted, which to me is disgusting. I say he should have been suspended for the entire playoffs. Yeah. I mean, I mean, this is not the first time he's gotten himself in trouble like this. I mean, we all remember that Thanksgiving game against, uh, what was it? Uh, it was Thanksgiving game. Lions were playing somebody, and then he put that big stomp on that that one guy. Mm -hmm. And he got fined and suspended for that. Now, I did hear that the Lions did fine and Dominican Sue for that. Yeah. But it just, it's, it's, it's just an atrocity that he's even going to play in this game. But yeah. I guess it doesn't really matter. But as you said, this is going to be. This will probably be the game of the week. Yeah. You got, you got three great guys on each team. You got Romo, Murray, and Bryant. Then you got Matthew Stafford, Richie Bush, and, of course, Megatron, Calvin Johnson. Uh, and it looks like Marty's signing off, so it's just us. So. Oh, okay. okay. But anyway. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I think they were asking a question a few days ago on SportsCenter, which... Which of the playoff teams has the most momentum? And they they basically said Dallas. Oh wow! I mean Dallas had that four game. I think it's a four game winning streak to finish the season. Mm -hmm. They went perfect four and zero in December, which I've not seen them do in a long time. Of course, we know about Romo and his problems, but he, he Romo really stepped it up. Mm -hmm. He really really did. Yep. And. Mm -hmm. Like I said, like I said earlier, the Saints were a surprising team for all the wrong reasons. The Cal Cowboys were a surprising team for all the right reasons. They really stepped it up. No, nobody, not even myself. And I'm a Cowboys. I'm a diehard Cowboys fan. You know that, bro. Yeah, I do. I myself thought the Cowboys with all the problems that they had before the season started, I didn't think they'd get 12 wins. I mean, I didn't even see them getting eight wins. Last three seasons in a row were eight and eight. Yeah. But they totally made something out of nothing. And they are like, I'll say right now, they are the hottest team heading into the playoffs right now. Mm -hmm. And so that, I'm going to say Cowboys advance. They will take down the Lions. I'm going to say final score 28-24. However, Ooh. what really scares me is if the Cowboys do win. Okay. If the Cowboys win, they have to go to the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. Ooh, boy. Yeah. Oh, wow. And the Cowboys have really not been very successful the last few years heading to Green Bay. So, I'm going to say the Cowboys take care of the Lions. Don't, don't look past the Lions. Don't worry about Green Bay right now. Just take care of the Lions. Well, I said 28 24 Cowboys win in advance. Wow. Okay. <clears throat> Alright, our next one. 
All right. Well, since you're gonna do, since we did your team, let's. Well, wait, 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 hold up, hold up. I got a okay. Got a message from uh from Marty before he. Oh, signed oh, that's off. right. Yeah, he gave okay, his predictions. Yes, uh, he says. Oh. He says Cowboys, but he didn't really give a score. No, he did not. But, oh boy. Um. Well, I'm sure yes. he's. I'm sure he's picking the Cowboys, but. We, don't know what score. Well, right. Okay. Well. Well. Anyway. Well. All right. All right. So we did the Cowboys. Your team. Now, let's do mine. The Baltimore Ravens traveling to Pittsburgh against the Steelers. All right. Now, this season for us, we got lucky. That's all I can say. All right, now, we acquired new acquisitions, including Steve Smith Sr. from the Carolina Panthers for three years, which some people think was a little bit too much. It should have been like two years or so, but instead it, it, it was three. He had a great season, put up some good numbers, uh, especially down in Tampa Bay when we crushed the heck out of the Buccaneers. We had a really good one. We lost our home opener against the Bengals, which... I really didn't see coming. I mean, I thought we were going to do pretty good, but the Bengals just played better than us. Um, a lot of um, close games as well. I mean, uh, I mean, just the disappointment one for me was against the Texans in Houston, which I really thought we would win, but the Texans just played better than us, and you got a third-string quarterback coming in there instead of Thaddeus Lewis starting a guy who was in the Jaguars practice squad, and he gets to start, and he beats us, surprisingly. Then we go to week 17, in which we have to win, and the San Diego Chargers have to lose, and we clinch a wild card spot. And we face the Cleveland Browns, where Johnny Manziel doesn't get the start, and it's Brian Hoyer. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And it was a pretty good game, but however, the Ravens just did a much better job in the next half. You know, they after halftime was over, they just they came to life, and they got the win, and... All we just needed was San Diego to lose, and they did. They lost to the Chiefs, surprisingly. I mean, because the starter, who was originally Alex Smith, had a lacerated spleen, and he was out. So they bring in Chase Daniels, I believe his name is. And he wasn't really doing all... I think he like played against San Diego last season or whatever, and he wound up losing to them. But instead, he gets the win for them, and we're in. But all to said again... We got lucky. That's all I'm saying. So, we're traveling to Pittsburgh once again, which we have done many times before. I remember going back to when we faced them in 2000, the 2011-12 season, I think it was. I'm not sure exactly. It was one game where we faced the Steelers, where Terrell Suggs comes in and sacks Roethlisberger. The ball goes on to the ground. Corey Redding, our former defensive end, picks it up, takes it in for a touchdown. The referees had to look it over and found out that it was a fumble and got the touchdown. Then, later on, they wound up losing, and Pittsburgh winds up advancing. But I can remember many others that they had as well, including Willis McGahee, who were former running back, took a, took a big hit from Ryan Clark, I believe, and knocked him out of the game as well, which I remember that game very well, but... We have not really had that much success against Pittsburgh in the playoffs in Pittsburgh. I don't th think we really have. But this is going to be tough. I mean, what I'm just saying is I'm just going to get out of the way, and I can't go with Pittsburgh because it's my Ravens, it's my team. I have to go with the Ravens. I really do because I'm a Raven guy. I've been a fan since 96. I was so happy we won the Super Bowl. Super Bowl and Ray Lewis's final season. I <coughs> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. I don't think we'll do, make it to the Super Bowl this season, but it's going to be very tough because you got the Patriots, you got Broncos, you got many others in there. But I'm still going with my Ravens because I can, and I'm going to say with a score of 27 to 24 by a field goal. Sounds pretty good. Sounds like a good score. I think I'm going to take that score too. 27-24. That sounds about right. Okay. Um, this this 
this is one of the one of the better rivalries in the NFL for the last decade or so. Oh yeah. I mean this this I mean every time Pittsburgh and Baltimore gets together for a game, I can't help but watch. And I'm definitely gonna be watching this one. Oh yeah. Um this and of course Cowboys and uh Cowboys and Lions that would be pretty good and by the way I made a mistake. He, uh Marty actually did leave a score. I wasn't reading it correct for the Cowboys game. He says Cowboys 25-24. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, back to this game. Uh -huh. um, yeah, I agree. The Ravens were lucky. They needed Kansas City to win, and they did. But unfortunately, it wasn't quite enough because... Kansas City needed to win, and then Baltimore and Houston would both have to lose for Kansas City to advance. But yeah. congratulations to the Ravens on getting into the playoffs. And now you got your bitter rivals, the Steelers. Oh, this is going to be something. Yeah. Um, Dan Robinsberger, uh Joe Flacco. I would not say they're elite quarterbacks, but they're very good. Yeah. Um, but I have to, I'm sorry, Steve, I'm going to have to break your heart on this one. <sighs> yeah, I got to go with the home team. I'm going with the Steelers, 27-24, however, and I'm just like, you know, I'm, I'm secretly hoping for your sake that I'm wrong. Yeah. Hate to do that to you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. And and let's see what uh, Marty Marty said. Ravens over Steelers, twenty four twenty two. Ooh. So right now we got we got two for the Ravens. I'm mm -hmm. picking the Steelers, but yeah. I mean either way, if if Baltimore wins, hey, I'll be all right with it. Right. No. Yeah. Or even if we lose, you know, I'll be all right with it, all right with it too, but still. <clears throat> okay. It should be a good game. All right. Now we just move on to our last one, and that is the other one for the AFC. The Cincinnati Bengals and Indianapolis Colts in Indianapolis. <clears throat> now... Um, let me see here. This this will be in, in Indianapolis. Um, yeah, okay. Um, the Bengals, you know, they they shut out my Ravens. You know, they beat us twice in the uh, first op the game opener and in Cincinnati. But however, I think they kind of got a little lucky, you know, because we if we would have gotten that touchdown, which wasn't for offensive pass interference, but it's the way it is. But the Bengals are a good team. We'll admit, you know, Andy Dalton's pretty good and. Um, the wide receiver um, is pretty good as well. The, uh, AJ Green, I think it is, and I'm not too no, you know, so so in the defense because I remember back in the day they had a couple players that were pretty good on the defense. Like <clears throat> um, I think they still have this guy, but I, don't, I can't even think of his name. Um, but the one offensive guard, remember they had or tackle or whatever Willie Anderson. I remember that guy. Then he comes to the Ravens, but the guy was pretty good as well. And of course. And Carson Palmer used to play for him as well, and he was great. And then you had Chad Johnson or Ocho Senko and TJ Hushmanzada, also one time Raven. But yeah, they were had some pretty good players, but they still do now. But for the Colts as well, you know, Andrew Luck, Reggie Wayne, and uh, kicker Adam Vinatieri, uh, good kicker as well. But this is a tough one for me. I mean, this could be pretty good as well. I'm, the Colts are 11 and 5, and the Bengals are 10 and 5 with a tie uh, from Carolina. But I don't know. Um, this is this is a tough one. I gotta think about this just a little bit. Um, hmm. This could go either way. Um, I'm gonna take a shot at this, and I'm gonna say the Cincinnati Bengals in this one. I'm gonna go with them because it's a little bit tough aside for this one, but it could be a, a close one, but I'll say Bengals by a score of, oh boy, just gotta be a 
it's going to be pretty close, I think. I'm going to go with a score of 33 to 27. <clears throat> wow. Sounds like a pretty high scoring game right there. Well, it's, it's tough for me to decide, but yeah. Yeah. Um, Colts this year have been kind of shaky, in my opinion, but somehow they made it into the playoffs. Cincinnati had a lot of momentum getting in there. Um, you have some. You have two great sets of quarterback receiver tandems. Of course, you got uh, Andy Dalton and AJ Green for the for the Bengals, mm -hmm. and then you got Andrew Luck and T.Y. Hilton for the Colts. Uh, but if you had to ask me which tandem I'd take, I'd, I'd probably I'd probably take uh, Andrew Luck and T.Y. Hilton, but not by much. Yeah. This, I think this will be a close game. I um, really don't know what else to say about it except to give a final score. I'd say probably, I'm going to say 28-24, Colts take it and they'll advance. Okay. And uh, what did Marty say here? He said... Colts over Bengals, 26-25. Hmm. I don't know, what's up with all these close games he's picking here? I don't know, I mean, except that um, other one, well, 26-15, the Cowboys, I think, but, yeah, whatever score was, I said, yeah. <laughs> okay, um, and that's it. That is all the games we have, so... Yep, um, that's right. It's just, it's just the first four games of the playoffs. Thirty-two. I mean, it, it's just one thing about the football season. It starts up, and then before you even think about it, the regular season's over and the playoffs are here. Yeah. So that means thirty-two teams started. Twenty have fallen. We're now down to twelve, and so we got. And of course, next week we've got a uh, we've got Seattle and Green Bay waiting in the wings in the NFC. Then we got the Patriots and the Broncos waiting in the AFC. Yep. And like I said, uh, I am scared. I mean, if but I say, I mean, if the Cowboys have done so good this season, I mean, they they. They could pull off the upset and beat Green Bay if they win against the Lions and head to head to Green Bay. I mean, I mean if that happens, man, that'll probably be even a more bigger victory than when the Cowboys went to Seattle and beat the Seahawks. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, but um, same thing with me. I mean, um, the Patriots as well because. You know, if, if we win that one, I think, then we face the Patriots, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And that kind of scares me a little bit, too, because, you know, we haven't had a lot of success with them. You know, going all the way back to that one game which the winner goes to the Super Bowl, I think, and uh, that former wide receiver Lee Evans drops that pass, which would have been a touchdown and a game winner right there. Then it gets worse when Billy Cundiff, a former kicker, misses the the field goal, like from I don't know how long it was, but everybody was just pretty much beside herself that it happened. Then comes new guy Justin Tucker, and who's doing a very outstanding job, in my opinion. I mean, the guy's just as good as Matt Stover, in my opinion, but he's definitely a great kicker. But yeah, but it still scares me a little bit because, like I said, we haven't had that much success against the Patriots. But if we win and we advance, but we'll see. But We'll see how that turns out. So, yeah. yeah. But there you go. So, that'll do it for this video of our uh, NFL uh, wild card picks and predictions. And I hope my phone is ringing right uh, now. But uh, uh, phone is ringing. But before we go, I'm just going to yeah. let everybody know. Uh -huh. um, sure. Uh, just holy cow! This is interesting. Uh, we have 
we have all four of these games. Each of these games, believe it or not, is going to be on a different network. Oh. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Two. Yeah. It's, yeah. It starts with the Saturday games. Uh, Arizona, Carolina. It's a three thirty-five Eastern game. That game will be on ESPN, which, by the way, it will be the very first NFL playoff game ever shown on ESPN. Found that, find that kind of interesting. <laughs> then, of course, you got you got the Ravens and Steelers. They're going to be in prime time on NBC, and hey, prime time game with two rivals like that. I'm going to be watching that one. <laughs> that's a, I think that's a seven fifteen Eastern start. Then on Sunday, eleven oh five East, no twelve oh five Eastern, Bengals and Colts will be on CBS. And then everything wraps up with a 3.40 Eastern start for the Lions and Cowboys. That game will be on Fox. Hmm. I find that kind of interesting that each of these games is going to be on a different network. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I hope everybody enjoys the games and hope your team, if they're in the playoffs, hope your team advances. Of course, I'm pulling for my Cowboys. I mean... Yeah, I, I forgot to mention that Tony Romo, of course, has a career record of one in three in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But um, but hey, if he can go four and zero in December, he can do pretty well in the playoffs. So uh, I guess that's all I gotta say about that. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> all right. So that being said, so. Everyone, please enjoy the games as well, and just want to say uh, as well, um, Happy New Year once again, Happy 2015, and uh, enjoy the games as well, and hope your favorite team, whoever you're rooting for, wins and does the best they can. So, um, thank uh, Mr. McClellan, Tim, once again for joining me. Thank you, Mr. Klobrowski, and uh, like I said, I'm, I think the Steelers may take this one, but I'm kind of yeah. hoping. Uh, but I, but I will not be angry if if the Ravens lose because they're both right. two good teams. Right. <clears throat> you really had me going there. <laughs> no. It's all, yeah. It's all good. Anyway, so, and also thank you, Marty, as well for joining. Even though you had to leave, it's okay. But so, um, so everyone, please enjoy the games and. We'll see you all next time uh, with the next one, which will be the... Okay, the, the divisional uh, right, round playoffs. The division. That will be the next one. So, thank you all for watching once again. Enjoy. Like, comment, subscribe, please. Once again, Happy New Year. And thank you. And I'll see you all once with more videos. You all take care. Goodbye. See you. See you.